Hello and welcome to News Central. I am Adebola Adeduba. Here are stories making the headlines beyond the continent. We begin the news in Europe as leaders of the 27 member states gather for an EU summit on migration. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen says the EU might draw lessons from a con contentious Italian policy of processing migrants offshore in Albania. Ahead of the Brussels summit, she wrote to EU leaders to say the EU's executive would present a new proposal for legislation to increase deportations of migrants. Meanwhile, Italy has begun sending some migrants to a processing center in Albania earlier this week. 16 men were transferred to the Albanian ports of Schengen on Wednesday, but hours after the arrival, it emerged that two were minors and two more were medically vulnerable and would therefore be returned to Italy. NATO defense ministers meet in Brussels to discuss Ukrainian president Vladimir Zelensky's victory plan. With additional territory being lost in its eastern region nearly every day, and pressure to, de to develop an exit strategy that it claims must begin with more Western assistance, keeps battlefield prospects are dire more than two and a half years into Russia's invasion. President Vladimir Zelensky has outlined his victory plan at EU summit, telling NATO defense chiefs and EU leaders that Ukraine must be in a strong position before engaging in peace negotiations with Russia. Let's also tell you that fans and onlookers gathered outside the hotel where British singer Liam Payne, a former member of the best-selling boy band One Direction, died at the age of 31 after falling from the third floor of the building in Buenos Aires, police and paramedics said. It was not immediately clear if the fall was accidental. Payne had spoken publicly about struggles with alcohol and police said they responded to a report of an aggressive man who may be under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Soy fan de One Direction desde muy chica y nada, tipo me choqueó saber que todo esto estaba pasando acá en Argentina y nada, saber que tipo vino a ver el show de Niall y que se haya caído del tercer piso y haya muerto es, es un poco fuerte y nada, me da mucha pena. Nada, me enteré por las noticias, al principio pensé que no era real, claramente, pensé que no sé, era cosa de los medios. Y la verdad que es muy doloroso porque fue una parte muy importante de mi vida, o sea... In North America, former U.S. President and Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump told an all-female audience in a pre-recorded town hall that he is the father of IVF, the latest in a series of conflicting stands he has taken on reproductive rights. Elsewhere on the campaign trail, Kamala Harris clashed with Fox News interviewer Brett Bayer on hot-button issues, including immigration, with Democratic nominee repeatedly asking, may I finish, when the host talked over her answers. For News Central, Chief International Correspondent Afia Hagen has more. Donald Trump has told an all-female audience at an election campaign event that he is the father of IVF, remarks his opponent, Vice President Kamala Harris, called quite bizarre. With less than three weeks until the U.S. presidential election, he said in a pre-recorded town hall event in the battleground state of Georgia that the Republicans really are the party for IVF. This issue has torn this country apart for 52 years. So we got it back in the states. We have a vote of the people and it's working its way through the system. And 
uh, ultimately, it's going to be the right thing. And IVF, you had mentioned before right, IVF. Let's get this question yeah. because I believe that's what this is about. Oh, I want to talk about IVF. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> father, you don't I'm hear the that every day. I'm <laughs> the father of IVF, so I want to hear this question. Responding to the former president's claim, Harris, his Democratic rival for the White House, asked on X, what is he talking about? Meanwhile, Harris turned questions about her nearly four years in office into attacks on Republican rival Trump's record in a heated interview on Fox News, her first appearance on the conservative network as she courts disaffected Republican and independent voters. Immigration was a dominant focus, the chaos that's worsened on the southern border through her time as vice president. It was combative for sure. The interviewer, veteran Fox host Brett Bear gave her a hard time, the sort of grilling she has consistently avoided through this campaign. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of not apprehensions... Finished. I'm not finished. We have a, we have it's a rough estimate of 6 million people have been released be, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question, I promise you. I was beginning to answer. The interview came as Harris seeks to appeal to small slivers of undecided voters who supported Republicans in the past but are uneasy with Trump. Her campaign has targeted those voters in recent days. Harris continues to lead Trump in nationwide polls, but questions remain over whether this will transfer into an election win. For News Central, I'm Afia Hagen. Meanwhile, volunteers from a pro-abortion rights grassroots organization converse outside a Charlie XCX concert in Orlando and go door-to-door -door speaking with young voters to rally support for Amendment 4, which aims to restore the right to abortion until fetal viability. Engaging concert goers like 25-year-old preschool teacher Gigi Fabriga, who shares a personal experience with abortion, the volunteers emphasize the importance of voting yes to protect productive freedom in Florida less than a month from the U.S. elections. Voting. Everyone's Fantastic. Vote. Do you have a plan to vote too? I mean, me myself. I've had abortions in the past and I knew it saved my life, like 100%. If I was in an abusive relationship, if I would have had the baby, I would be in a horrible place right now. Trying to just make sure that people that might not uh, typically vote, which are younger people, uh, know that they have a right to reproductive freedom, especially after Amendment uh, 4 gets passed uh, on a 60% threshold. Uh, every vote counts, so we know that uh, Charlie fans really count in this election as well. Progress Florida is really centered on Yes on 4 right now, so we approach that from a multitude of ways, through communications, through social media, and through field activities like we're doing today, where we're literally meeting voters face-to-face -face or over the phone uh, to talk about why it's so important to yeah, vote yes. Mm -hmm. I use a doctor, and, and so I think it's something that should be uh, a conversation that women have with their doctors. Um, I actually... Um, my very first pregnancy was a miscarriage after like eight weeks. So, I mean, you don't even know sometimes, you know, what's going on. So I think it's really important for women to be able to make those decisions for themselves. Let's take a break now. When we return, we'll tell you Australian Territory resumes Jailin 10-year-old. Join us again. Thank you for staying tuned. In South America, supporters and opponents have gathered in front of the courthouse where former Bolivian President Janine Anes was transferred early on October 17th. The court in La Paz is to begin the tr criminal trial on Thursday against former Bolivian President Janine Anes for allegedly planning a coup d'etat against then-President Evo Morales in 2019. Held in a La Paz prison, Anez was already sentenced to 10 years in prison in June 2022 for assuming the presidency in an unconstitutional manner. The trial was stacked with the 57-year-old former president, Luis Fernando Camacho, the former governor of Santa Cruz, and six other individuals, including former ministers, former police and military chiefs, and a social leader. 
In Oceania, children as young as 10 will soon be able to, to be jailed once again in Australia's Northern Territory after the government there lowered the age of criminal responsibility. Australian states and territories have been under pressure to raise the age of criminal responsibility from 10 to 14, in line with other developed countries and UN advice. Last year, the NT became the first jurisdiction to lift it to 12, but a new country Liberal Party government elected in August has said a reversal is necessary to reduce youth crime rate. However, despite doctors, human rights organizations and indigenous communities contesting that reasoning, it has maintained that raising that age back to 10 will eventually safeguard children. Let's head to the Middle East where 28 people have been killed, including at least five children, by an Israeli strike on a school tent shelter in Gaza, according to the Hamas-run Health Ministry. According to Gaza Health Ministry official Madhat Abbas, the Abu Hussein School in Jabalia, northern Gaza, was sheltering displaced people. He adds that 160 people were wounded in the strike, adding that there is no water to extinguish the fire. Hezbollah lawmaker Hassan Fadlala says that the Israeli army is not fully in control of any South Lebanon village. Fadlala, during a press conference at Lebanon's parliament, said Israel has been unable to completely occupy any village and adds that Israel is implementing a scorched earth policy by systematically destroying villages in an effort to establish a buffer zone devoid of people, structures, farms and trees. بعد مرور شهر على العدوان الواسع على بلدنا فان جيش الاحتلال لم يترك وسيله من وسائل القتل الا واستخدمها من ارتكاب المجازر ضد المدنيين سواء المقيمين او النازحين واستهداف رجال الانقاذ والقطاع الصحي والاستشفاء والمؤسسات الانسانيه والمساجد والكنائس والحسينيات الى تدمير المنشات المدنيه والبلديات على رؤوس العاملين فيها كما رأينا في أكثر من بلدة وخصوصا بالأمس في النبط لقد عمد الاحتلال إلى اتباع سياسة الأرض المحروقة من خلال التدمير الممنهج للقرى والبلدات على امتداد المناطق التي يستهدفها لكن خصوصا في الجنوب وعلى خط الحدود حيث يحاول إقامة منطقة عازلة ليس من السكان أيضا من الأبناء you're watching Beyond the Continent. Let's take a short break. Stay with us. Thank you for staying tuned. A bus carrying Japanese tourists veered off a road and crashed into a ditch in Turkey on Thursday, injuring 22 people on board, the state run news agency reported. The Anadolu agency reports that the accident occurred in the highway in Afyon Karahisa province about 250 kilometers southwest of Ankara. The cause of the accident was not immediately known. However, the injured passengers, including one who was in a life-threatening condition, has been taken to hospitals in Afyon Karahisa. In Asia, the United Nations mission in Afghanistan has called for investigation into a report that a large group of Afghan migrants had been shot and killed on the Afghanistan-Iran border. Afghan media outlets, including Tolo News, citing witnesses, said more than 200 Afghan migrants who entered Iran illegally were attacked on Iranian territory and that dozens had been killed and injured. Iran's ambassador to Afghanistan, Hassan Kazami Kwame, denied the reports of the death of dozens of illegal nationals in a post on X. Afghanistan's Taliban run administration has not confirmed the incident and said it was investigating. Pakistani police fired tear gas on protesters wielding sticks and throwing objects as at least 400 students in the city of Rawalpindi become the latest to stage demonstration sparked by social media reports of an alleged rape on a college campus in Lahore. Hundreds of students have protested at campuses around the city, 
after social media posts reported that a woman was raped at the college by a security guard. Directors of the college, the police and provincial government have said there is no evidence that a rape took place and blamed the reports and false information. पार्किंग में हर दुनिया के घटिया से घटिया बिल्डिंग की भी पार्किंग में कैमरा है इनकी पार्किंग में कोई कैमरा नहीं है इतनी गंदी इनकी बिल्डिंग है इतना इनके पास पैसा नहीं है कैमरा लगाए सब था सारे सबूत थे इन्होंने छुपाया इन्होंने हुकूमत को और जो मेन मेन बंदे थे उनको पैसे दिए कि इनके इदारे का नाम खराब ना हो खुदारा खुदा का नाम लो अपनी तुम्हारी माए बेटियाँ जो करना है तमीज से तरीके से इंसाफ से करो I saw that on social media we got to know that she was raped by security guard. Uh, it was also um, like some sources were saying that uh, uh, the van driver he was also involved in that. Social media पे ऐसे ही तो नहीं ना आ रही. एक चीज़ viral हो रही है कि ये बात हुई है. ठीक है हम एक peaceful protest करते हैं यहाँ पे. Police वालों ने आके बदतमीजी की. ठीक है. उन्होंने आके यहाँ पे shelling की. वहाँ यहाँ पे firing की. उन्होंने किस वजह से की? हम अपने हक के लिए निकले हैं. हम justice के लिए निकले हैं. P G C में जिस लड़की के साथ नाइंसाफी हुई है हम उसके लिए निकले हैं ठीक है और ये जो है कि फेक न्यूज है दिस इज नॉट अ फेक न्यूज दिस इज अ रियल न्यूज एंड 100% श्योर व्हेन वेल इंडियाज फॉरेन मिनिस्ट्री स्पोक्समैन रंदे हेल जायसवाल स्लैम्स कैनेडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर जस्टिन शोडियो ओवर हिज हैंडलिंग ऑफ डिजास्टर्स डिप्लोमेटिक फॉलोअप फॉलोइंग द 2023 किलिंग ऑफ अ सेक्स सेपरेटिस इन कनाडा According to him, Canada has leveled the serious allegations, but has so far not given any evidence to back it up. In September of 2023, uh, the Canadian government has not shared any shred of information with us. Yesterday, again, after the public inquiry, public uh, hearing, we had again issued a statement saying that Canada has leveled serious allegations but has so far not given any evidence any evidence to back it up as regards the allegations pm trudeau's own admission yesterday would indicate the value of these allegations as regards our stance we will naturally reject false imputations against our diplomats india canada economic ties are robust and strong we have a large diaspora resident in canada uh, our students form the largest cohort of international students in the country uh, several uh, large Can canadian pension funds are invested in india and canada is a major beneficiary of these linkages and ties finally a bangladeshi court has ordered an arrest warrant for former prime minister sheikh hasina who fled to india in august after she was ousted by mass protest hasina is wanted by bangladesh international criminal tribunal for her alleged involvement in crimes against humanity that took place during demonstrations in which hundreds were killed. Asina, who was in charge of Bangladesh for more than 20 years, was seen as an autocrat whose government ruthlessly clamped down on dissent. Arrest warrants have also been issued for 45 others, including former government ministries who also fled the country. আজকে বাংলাদেশের জুলাই আগস্ট অভ্যুত্থানের পরবর্তী নতুন বাংলাদেশের ইতিহাসে আজকে দিনটা একটা স্মরণীয় দিন হয়ে থাকবে আদালত আমাদের আবেদন মঞ্জুর করে সাবেক প্রধানমন্ত্রী শেখ হাসিনাকে গ্রেফতার করার জন্য নির্দেশ দিয়েছেন এবং আঠারোই নভেম্বরের মধ্যে তাকে গ্রেপ্তার করে এই আদালতে উপস্থিত করার জন্য নির্দেশ দিয়েছেন আজকে জুলাই আগস্টে পরিচালিত ম্যাসাকার हत्या गणहत्या और मानवता बिधी जो अपराध जरा कर तर शीर्षे जिन्हें तदानीतन प्रधानमंत्री शेख हासा तर बिुदे आंतर्जा अपराध आदालते अपराध ट्राइब्युनले आज के ग्रेफ्तारी परवाना जारी करार आवेदन जान and that's all on beyond the continent you can watch new central live on dstv channel 422 star times channel 274 avo tv and youtube many thanks for watching i am adebola adidba it's bye for now mm -hmm.